times like these? On January 6, 1941, 11 months prior to the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor and the United States' subsequent entry into World War II, President Franklin D. Roosevelt went before Congress to speak about the nation's State of the Union. Now the country was being impacted by the aggressive and brutal actions of countries halfway around the world. Although the United States was not directly under attack, many of the country's allies and trade partners were. Roosevelt was facing stiff challenges as hundreds of thousands of United States citizens were advocating for an isolationist agenda and neutrality acts that limited the country's involvement in foreign wars. Recognizing this challenge, Roosevelt framed his speech envisioning a post-war world that was secure and at peace, free from aggression, and founded upon four essential freedoms. The first is freedom of speech and expression everywhere in the world. The second is freedom of every person to worship God in his own way everywhere in the world. The third is freedom from want, which translated into world terms means economic understanding which will secure to every nation a healthy peacetime life for its inhabitants everywhere in the world. The fourth is freedom from fear, which translated into world terms means a worldwide reduction of armament to such a point and in such a thorough fashion that no nation will be in a position to commit an act of physical aggression against any neighbor anywhere in the world. Although Congress applauded the merits of his words, Roosevelt's four freedoms were conspicuously absent from newspaper reports of the speech. Already America's preeminent illustrator, Norman Rocco, was struck by Roosevelt's ideals and decided to depict the four freedoms in everyday terms that many Americans would understand and identify with. Two years after Roosevelt's speech and following seven months of work on Rocco's behalf, his four freedoms paintings were published in the Saturday Evening Post in February and March of 1943. The overwhelmingly positive response to these images represented a significant turning point as they helped Americans to envision what they were fighting for and why the war effort should be supported. This is the story behind Norman Rockwell's Four Freedoms. In the spring of 1942, Norman Rockwell was working on a piece commissioned by the Ordnance Department of the U.S. Army a painting of a machine gunner in need of ammunition. Posters of the gunner, titled Let's Give Him Enough and On Time, were distributed to ordnance plants throughout the country to encourage production. This illustration is the only image Rockwell ever painted of a person in battle. After completing this poster for the U.S. Army, he realized that he wanted to do more and planned to make a statement about why the country was fighting the war. Rockwell attempted to read the words of the Atlantic Charter for inspiration, but could not get past the first chapter. The language of the Charter, in his words, stuck in his throat. However, what Rockwell did take note of in the Atlantic Charter was the reference to two of Roosevelt's four freedoms, freedom from want and freedom from fear. Rockwell stewed over the idea of the four freedoms for quite some time. He tried this and that, but nothing worked. As he wrote in his autobiography, it was so darn high-blown, sometimes I just couldn't get my mind around it. Then one night, Rockwell suddenly remembered how his Arlington, Vermont neighbor, Jim Edgerton, stood up to express an opinion that opposed the ideas of many of the townspeople. But they let him have his say and listened respectfully to his ideas. No one shouted him down. Rockwell realized that this was the embodiment of freedom of speech. Rockwell got excited. 
He made some rough sketches and accompanied by fellow Saturday Evening Post artist Meade Schaefer, went to Washington to propose his idea. Unfortunately, the timing was wrong. The Ordnance Department didn't have the resources for another commission. But on his way back to Vermont, Rockwell stopped at Curtis Publishing Company, publisher of the Saturday Evening Post in Philadelphia, and showed his sketches to editor Ben Hibbs. Hibbs immediately made plans to use the illustrations in the Post. Each image would be accompanied by an essay written by a noted author of the day. The first of Rockwell's four freedoms was freedom of speech. It was published in the Saturday Evening Post on February 20th, 1943. Arlington had a, a high school that was built in the 1920s, and in 1940 there was a fire, and the high school burned down. So there was immediately a need in town to decide whether to build a new high school, whether to send kids to neighboring towns for high school. So there was a movement in town to appropriate money to build a new high school, and that required the approval of the town meeting. Jim Edgerton, who was a farmer in town, he got up at the town meeting and he spoke against the effort to spend money to build a new high school. Edgerton was a farmer in town. He lived next door to Rockwell and as a farmer, he was very conscious of every nickel, every dime. It was during the Depression, the price of commodities had plummeted, and he paid his bills every month by selling milk. He wasn't poor, but he was feeling a pinch, and he was concerned about the expenditure of money. He got up, he spoke his mind, and people were listening to him, other voters, other legislators, listening to him respectfully. And then there was a vote, and uh, the vote didn't go his way, but he had his opportunity to speak and to make his opinions known. Although Jim Edgerton served as the inspiration for freedom of speech, Rockwell ultimately used Carl Hess as his model. Hess owned and operated a small gas station and car repair shop in Arlington, about half a mile from Rockwell's home. Hess's lean ruggedness, dark complexion, sunken cheeks, and overall angularity suggested the physique of Abraham Lincoln, an inspiration to Rockwell and the subject of several of his illustrations. The town hall scene was an appropriate vision for freedom of speech in the artist's eyes. Even though Rockwell now had his inspiration and his model, he still toiled over what the final image would look like and experimented with several possible solutions. His composition first positioned the speaker as surrounded by his neighbors with a focus on their reactions to his words. Ultimately, Rockwell chose to present him as the sole standing orator and the subject of his neighbor's attention. Rockwell himself appears in the crowd. The second of Rockwell's four freedoms was Freedom of Worship. It was published in the Saturday Evening Post on February 27, 1943. Freedom of Worship posed another challenge for Rockwell, for he understood that religion was a deeply personal and sometimes delicate subject. He wanted to paint an image conveying unity despite differences presenting a vision for a world without discrimination based upon religious practice or belief. His initial concept depicted an amicable scene in a country barber shop, in which a Jewish man is attended to by a barber, while a Catholic priest and an African-American man wait their turn. But Rockwell found, upon almost completing this image, that it presented a stereotypical view. So dissatisfied with this approach, he set it aside and started over again. The final image that we see today focuses more on the concept of worship rather than the concept of religion, and is composed of the profiles of eight heads in a shallow visual space. The various figures represent people of different faiths in a moment of prayer. The image was painted in monochromatic hues, 
to provide a sense of inclusion and unity. Rockwell felt that in a composition, the positions and gestures of the hands are second only to expressive qualities of faces, as is exemplified in Freedom of Worship. The wording, each according to the dictates of his own conscience, was a phrase that reflected Rockwell's own thoughts on religion. When asked where he had heard these words, Rockwell could not recall. In fact, the phrase exists in many state constitutions of the United States and was also used by George Washington in a letter penned to the United Baptist Chamber of Virginia in 1789. The third of Rockwell's Four Freedoms was Freedom from Want. It was published in the Saturday Evening Post on March 6, 1943. Freedom from Want was not as great a conceptual challenge as Rockwell's other two previous paintings. The piece was inspired by and has since become a model for the All-American Thanksgiving. Though created as a composite with Rockwell's models posing for him in his studio at individual sessions, this family scene includes some of the artist's own neighbors and family members. Featured is Mrs. Thaddeus Wheaton, the family's cook who supports a large holiday turkey, as well as Mary Barstow Rockwell, the artist's wife, and his mother, Nancy Hill Rockwell, who is seen on the right. Freedom from Want was published with an essay by the relatively unknown novelist and poet, Carlos Bolosan, a Filipino immigrant to America and a migrant worker who wrote on behalf of those enduring domestic hardship. A counterpoint to the gentle representations in Rockwell's paintings, Bulosan's essay looked forward to a possible future in which those outside the social mainstream might be allowed to experience true freedom. Artistically, the work is highly regarded as an example of the mastery of the challenges of portraying visual texture in art, including the gleam of white china on white tablecloth and the transparency of water in glasses. The piece is one of the most appropriated of Rockwell's artworks. His composition is familiar to many and has made its way into the public imagination. In today's digital age, it is not uncommon to see the memes or borrowings of Freedom From Want's composition on social media, on television, or in the movies. Despite Rockwell's general optimism, he had misgivings about having depicted such a large turkey when much of Europe was starving overrun and displaced as World War II raged. Many critics acknowledged the overabundance of food depicted in this image, but also noted that the image displays family, conviviality, and security, and were of the opinion that abundance, rather than mere sufficiency, was the truest answer to the notion of want. The fourth and final painting of Rockwell's Four Freedoms is Freedom from Fear. It was published in the Saturday Evening Post on March 13, 1943. Freedom from Fear was painted while Europe was under siege, as revealed in the headline of the newspaper held in the father's hand. Rockwell's intention was to convey the notion that all parents should be able to put their children to bed each night with the assurance of their safety. Here, a mother and father appear to check on their sleeping children as beautiful touches tell the story of a comfortable middle-class life. Pictures, clothing, and toys are in the children's bedroom, though the children do share a single bed. A warm light shines from the first floor of their home, implying that this family has attained some fiscal security and the American dream. Although Rockwell did not view freedom from fear as particularly strong, the painting has remained relevant and has struck a chord in response to notable world events. After 9-11, the New York Times published Freedom from Fear on the front page of the paper, substituting Rockwell's headline with language referencing the attacks in New York, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania. In response to riots resulting from racial violence around the country, many artists have reinterpreted Freedom from Fear, as well as Rockwell's iconic problem we all live with, to reflect those contemporary events and concerns. The paintings were a phenomenal success. After their publication, the Post received 25,000 requests for reprints. In May 1943, representatives from the Post and the U.S. Department of the Treasury announced a joint campaign to sell war bonds and stamps. 
they would send the Four Freedoms paintings on a national war bonds tour. Traveling to 16 cities, the exhibition was visited by some 1.2 million people who purchased $133 million in war bonds and stamps. In 2018 numbers, that translates to $1.9 billion raised during the Four Freedoms War Bond Show Tour. Each person who purchased a war bond received a set of prints of the four paintings. In addition, the Office of War Information printed four million sets of posters of the paintings. Each was printed with the words, Buy War Bonds. They were distributed in U.S. schools and institutions and overseas. Rockwell kicked off the war bond tour at Hex Department Store in Washington, D.C. with a state banquet attended by Washington dignitaries and socialites. The following day, seated on a stage in the midst of a churning sea of hundreds of people, Rockwell autographed reprints of the Four Freedoms. People received these premiums for purchasing the war bonds in any denomination. After the hubbub of the opening events, Rockwell tired from his notoriety and the time away from his studio. He quietly went back to Vermont to continue to paint covers for the Saturday Evening Post and other clients. After the war, Rockwell's Four Freedoms paintings went on tour again as part of the Freedom Train that ran between 1947 and 1949. The Freedom Train was dedicated to the history of American democracy and contained some of the country's priceless historical documents, including the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Emancipation Proclamation, paintings from World War I, as well as Rockwell's Four Freedoms paintings. Americans from around the country got the opportunity to see these important testaments to American history and democracy. In all, more than 323 million people in 326 cities went on board the Freedom Train. The way I got on the train was to buy a war bond. And I had to pay $18.75 to get a $25 war bond. Before we left, I didn't have enough money in my little uh, savings bank to buy a war bond, I think I had 1750. So my dad gave me another buck and a quarter in quarters, and I pasted the stamps in my stamp book. And then when I got to the train, then I gave them my little stamp book, and that's how I bought my $25 war bond. And then I got on the train. There was one of the four freedoms in each car, and then there were other paintings in other cars, and I saw Uncle Sam Wants You, and I saw some of those other famous paintings. They were created during World War I. And I was just, I was frozen. Born amid the turmoil of World War II, the Four Freedoms have since become one of its greatest legacies, a testament to the paramount importance of human rights and dignity. Brought forward by one of America's greatest presidents and immortalized by one of its most beloved artists more than 75 years ago. The Four Freedoms continue to inspire, resonating across generations as strongly today as they did in their time.